Hey, welcome to the show, Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business. This is Coach James Short, aka Shorty. And this is a show for those within the real estate industry wanting to lead and grow their real estate business. It's a series of interviews that we conduct for those within the industry. So we're finding out what those leaders are within the industry. What makes them tick? What's their story? What are their strategies? And how do they how to become the leaders and the growers within the industry? But also it's an interview series with those outside of the industry. I'm always a big believer of, of looking at a whole different part of the pie rather than just focusing on one part of the pie. Because what it does, it allows you to have a different perspective, allows you to get snippets or gold, golden nuggets from those outside of the industry that can look in the industry and go, hmm, there's a different perspective. And so I encourage you to reach out to the guests. I encourage you to lean into these series to find out how can these pieces of information, experiences, stories help you lead and grow your real estate business. Welcome back to another edition, and I'm excited because we're going across the oceans to beautiful New Zealand, and we're chatting with Jessica Aspremont. Whoa. She's the founder of The Perfect Match Real Estate. I'm so excited to find out a little bit more around what's happening over there. She's passionate about creating a seamless real estate experience where connections are effortless and dreams become reality. The Perfect Match mission is is to revolutionize the real estate landscape by fostering harmonious partnerships among buyers, sellers, and developers, where they aim to simplify the process and to ensure that every connection is a perfect match. Jessica's background is a diverse background in business development and property management from industry leaders like Harcourts and Airbnb, where she brings a unique perspective to the table. Her experience enables her to navigate complex real estate needs with ease and precision. It's excited to have her on the show today and welcome, 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 Jessica. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm so excited. I want to move to Australia, actually. <laughs> it's much warmer. <laughs> it actually, is a little bit warmer. Here. It is. It it's, is. Actually, it's actually warm here in Christchurch today, so we're quite lucky to be a nest. But um, yeah, it's really, really exciting, I guess, just to, doing something a little bit different. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so, so let's go back to let's go back to that beginning on how you transition into the real estate world what was that transition for you what was what was that starting of your journey um basically i was working for how could then property management and doing business development and i realized it's not exactly what i wanted to do i just feel like i had aspiration to do something you know bigger really um and so i used to be like so how can I say, really, really into doing prospecting, but even more than prospecting, I call it hunting, you know, really looking for opportunities, looking for people, let's say, uh, empty houses. or or. And I was like, oh, I think there is something out there that I can do, which uh, would be actually to help people who want to be buying and selling, uh, to be connected with the right, let's say, real estate agent or buyer and seller. And that aspiration also came the fact that um, I have realized that so many people were disappointed by the real estate agent they have chosen. And I keep hearing that, you know, all the time. And I was like, oh, but it's not true. There is some good agents out there, you know. Um, let's try to do something about it. So, yeah, I went a little bit crazy. <laughs> And I decided around uh, one and a half year ago to um, yeah to create my own company called the Perfect Match Real Estate, um, which is a connector service. So I'm not a real estate agent, but I'm just here to help people to make the right connections. And how do I know? It's because I have selected or pre-selected the agent I work with. So I know what they do. You know, they have a proven track record. Um, and even in the current market, they're actually, actually still um, selling pretty good. Fantastic. And so so you had this insight, you had this awareness piece and, and you've gone off to to fulfill that gap and, and really look at that that connection piece service. Now before I, I go down that that rabbit hole with the business, now there's multiple accents I'm hearing. Uh, and I know that you speak multiple languages. Share with us like where's that accent come from and what are the language that different languages that you speak? 
Um, so I'm actually French, but my mum is Portuguese, so I speak a little bit of Portuguese. My dad is Italian, but I don't really speak Italian, sorry. <laughs> but I speak Spanish. I speak a little bit of Japanese as well, um, because I always had love for languages. And I realized that sometimes, and even in my business, I feel really grateful to be able to speak so many languages because people like it, you know, they just like, oh, you're actually making an effort to say ni hao, you know, or hello in Chinese or, or even a few words. And like I always say, just it makes the difference, you know. Um, sometimes when I do some prospecting as well, I don't know about the name or surname and I'm like, oh, that sounds a little bit Korean, you know, and then I do some research and you end up being, let's say, Chinese and I was I was like, oh, okay, interesting. But I like to do that always because that give me, um, I don't know, just showing interest for the person and creating that first connection as well. And I was going to say that, like that really shows that you've got that care factor and it really builds that relationship and that connection piece, which I think is the essence of your business, right? Your Is that real connection piece. And and that's why I sort of wanted to, to hear that from you because when you're taking that extra step, when you're taking that extra bit of interest, you are building that relationship, you are building that connection, um, and you are building that That's that right. no like like and trust. Coming back to the business, then is that you had this awareness, you had this aha moment of like, hey, there's a there's an opportunity here, there's a gap in the market that I can definitely fulfill. How how do you go about that now building the business? What's what's the plans around that? How do you see that? What's what's that look like for you? Hey guys, just a little side note here. How's it going? Are you on track this year? I know that sometimes this part of the year we can feel like we're in a bit of a grind, a bit of in the trenches. Are you on track from the original plans that you set out for the rest of this year? What I've realized is that between with this time of year, we get so distracted and we've got trying to chase so many shiny balls and go down so many rabbit holes. And that's why I credit a program called the 90. It's a framework that actually allows you to achieve more in 90 days than ever before. Some of the feedback that we've got from some of the people that have used the process, the 90, is that they've achieved more in 90 days than the whole previous year. So if you'd like to have the tools, have the techniques, have the framework on the 90, so you and your team can achieve more in 90 days than ever before. What it does, and it impacts you of, of how to get clear, what you need to do, and who you need to be to show up in order to achieve the things you want to achieve over the next 90 days. Simply head over to jamesshort.com.au, click on join the wait list, fill in your details, and one of the team members will be in touch and take you through the 90 framework. On with the show. So basically, um, it has been really challenging, obviously, you know, like for many, plus creating a service that people are not aware of. Um, I had to learn so much along the way. I'm not going to lie. Like I was not into doing social media, creating posts, doing all of this networking. And then you know, you're like, wow, actually, I've got a lot to do here. Um, you know, and even like that, many people still think I'm a real estate agent. And I say, no, I'm not. I'm a connector. <laughs> You know, I help also with property management and, you know, financial services and so on, because I feel like the connector service, you know, it's really wide. You could be doing a lot of things at the end of the day. But um, yes, right now, basically, um, people are more and more aware about what I do. Um, I do still a lot of prospecting and hunting and so on, you know, um, calling people. But because I'm a connector, people tend to listen to me much more than if I was a real estate agent, <laughs> you know, it's, because. It's funny, isn't it? It's because that I'm third not, third party because yeah. you're, you're not specifically, uh, you know, you're not a, an agent, but you're almost like that. It's like when when people go to a different person to get uh, advice or so forth, but they have they can see it from different angles and, and and from different sides, where you can see it from both the buyers, the sellers, and agents, and and so forth and so forth. And so from that, then how do you then so you're you're prospecting? Are you prospecting for 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 clients? Are you prospecting for more real estate agents? Where where where's your focus at the moment? Actually, no, I'm more. The, the best sometimes is, of course, to be dealing with sellers. Um, so I definitely want to have more sellers coming to me and be like, oh, I actually live, let's say, in Wellington, and I'm trying to sell my house in Christchurch, and I do not know which agent I should use. Who would you recommend, you know? 
uh, it's what I would like because there is a difference here in New Zealand and in Australia. Uh, we have, um, in Australia, you have buyer's agent. We have buyer's agent, but they don't really have almost all the time a contract with a seller. Um, so, um, which, uh, sorry, with the buyer, uh, which make, make the difference. So here in, in New Zealand, the listing agent can have also the buyer if you know what I mean. So it's really different. So make it quite hard. I work with a lot of buyers, but sometimes they can just like run away and <laughs> it would have been a waste of time for many people, if you know what I mean. So mm. it's safer, let's put it that way, to be dealing with uh, with sellers. But I work also with developers and I put them in touch with private sellers. So there is many, dif many sorry, different things that can be done and many connections that can be created. And they all depend on the need of the person I have in front of me, you know. So it could be a private seller and it's like, oh, I have a piece of land. I would like to put it up to the market. But would you know someone who would be interested and then I can just do enough markets if it's a good price, you know? So yes, ma many options really. Yeah, fantastic. And where do you see where where do you see it going over the next, I say I guess say three to five years? Is it something that you'd like to to expand into the Australian market or or different overseas markets? How do you see that? Is there any directions around that, plans around that? Yes, 100%. I would like to expand and probably have someone working with me in the future because I'm the only one doing everything. So it's going to be quite full on with two uh, children as well. And uh, I have a second job. So I actually work on two jobs. <laughs> Wow, busy. which make it even more, uh, you know, full on. But yeah, I would love, would like to. Um, and I really have to. That's why I do a lot of social media, uh, a brand awareness. I really want people to understand my service. I'm not real estate and I'm a connector. I'm only pay once the house is sold. It's a free service. There's no obligation. And um, you can just be in touch with my agent, have a chat for five minutes, and you'll see, you know, um, if you would like to to move forward. And there's nothing to lose. You can then decide to go on your own or, or do whatever, you know, so... Fantastic. I love it. Great, great idea, great initiative, and, and definitely a great service. Um, Jessica, on the show, we have our 60-second quiz to find out a little bit more about our guests. Are you willing to play? Yes, of course, always. <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. Uh, favorite food? Uh, lasagna. Oh, yum. Favorite movie? Déjà Vu with Denzel Washington. <laughs> of course. A favorite holiday destination? Actually, uh, think about two places. My mum is from Portugal, so I love Portugal, but I've been to Fiji and it was great as well. Yeah, nice. Uh, what's your morning routine? Well, I've got kids, right? I wake up at seven, making lunch boxes, getting kids ready for school. And most of the time I start working around eight. Yeah, I try to do that in the morning. Nice. And do you have an evening routine? I guess yes and no, you know, getting kids ready to go to sleep between, let's say, seven and eight maximum. If I can go for a walk, I would um, try to not work after that if I can. But once again, you know, it just all depends on how much work needs to be done. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what's your most embarrassing moment? Is it in real estate or not? No, <laughs> any, any, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really funny though it's really embarrassing but funny at the same time um right i was in the changing room one day right and it was back in france and i stepped out of the changing room and i turned right and i said oh, sorry excuse me and then i looked at it it was me in the mirror <laughs> so i got scared of myself pretty good right love it that's a great one that's a great one if you could choose five inspirational people to have dinner with they could be dead or alive who would they be see thing about denzel washington i like him though uh, <laughs> i don't know why but i'm thinking also about edith piaf because she was famous when she died when she died which is quite funny in a way um and two person I'm thinking of are actually unfortunately dead, but my grandmother and my auntie, and my auntie, sorry. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Inspiration. Um, definitely. If you were a prime minister for the day, what's one thing that you would change? Drop the food price. Mm. Yep. Yep. 
Definitely, definitely. What's your best piece of advice? Um, my piece of advice in genuine in life or um Yeah. Um that would be don't give up perseverance, yeah. And just uh, follow your instincts. It's why I try to do many people say, Are you sure you want to do that? Or you should maybe give up. And I was like, you know, more than once I did think about giving up, but I was like, no. You keep going it, do it, do it. And regardless, I have learned so much for the future. And I know that what I'm doing now, it can be used in any companies as a business development because I've learned so much. That's a great piece of advice. And it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing how when we learn one thing that can be transferred to to multiple things and multiple areas and multiple departments or businesses and so forth. And I think that's the joys of, I guess, running your own business. You know, it's... It, it doesn't come necessarily with a a, a talk. It, well, there are toolkits, but the lessons that you learn around oneself, around your own personal mm. development, around running a business, that's it's it smashes you right in the face sometimes. <laughs> mm. And that's yep. why also at the same time, I um, I wanted to work for a long time also with Darren Prattley. So Darren Prattley is a high performance speaker. And we tried for like over a year and I was like, I really want to work with that person because we understand there will be a synergy between us, like really a match. So Darren Prattley is a high performance speaker and he helped companies to improve, um, achieve high performance, help people to adapt. Plus with the market, because the market is quite challenging. So we understand challenging. You need to upskill and and implement the right strategies. And I was like, oh, yes, you know. And because of all I have learned for a year, you no, know, I've got really that mindset. You know, I mean, of kind of a leadership and I know what to do. And you make things so much easier. Hmm. And I think that I want to touch on that. And that's the importance of, of having those mentors in your life, where this is where you wanted to work with him for for so long and you've got that opportunity now and you're like a sponge right because and this yeah. is where having a mentor but also having that right environment to thrive in where you become that product of that environment that what you learn what you don't learn you know what you say what you don't say and i think tell me about that how has working with darren really changed your outlook and your mindset um I'm much more confident now because I know how Darren is always full of beans, heaps of energy. And he trusts me, which is really good to get someone to work with. There is no barriers. He's my manager, but at the same time, every time I ask something to him, or I say, maybe we should change that or we should do that every time. Or most of the time, he would say, yes, I agree with you. Just do it. Just do it. And I think trusting, right? Because trusting people is so important, you know, and to gain that trust from someone else. So he knows the value behind my service and my skills that he actually trusts me enough to be like, yeah, you, you do it. Because Darren has a so high um, like reputation, you know, he's really booked up person. And, and so for someone to actually say, I trust you, you know, it's really important to me. Um, and, you know, during my journey, I have inspired people, which I really wanted to. Um, and I definitely, you know, I gained some more confidence. Um, you know, I'm a hard worker, I'm passionate, and I've got a lot of drive. Um, and it's, you know, it's really good to be able to share that with other people as well. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. So Jessica, how can um, people reach out? How can they follow your journey? How can they get into, into contact with you? Um, well, I'm a lot into uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, got um, also like a landing page where people can contact me with the perfect match real estate, but they can find me as well with Inc. Um, consulting with Darren Prattley. So yeah, I'm kind of a bit everywhere when someone's, you know, want to be really looking for me. Um, it should be all right. It's quite easy to get in touch with me. Fantastic. Jessica, really thank you for your time, energy and expertise uh, on today and uh, good luck with everything in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. It was a pleasure.